This is a list of the National Register of Historic Places listings in Detroit, Michigan. This is intended to be a complete list of the properties and districts on the National Register of Historic Places in Detroit, Michigan, United States. Latitude and longitude coordinates are provided for many National Register properties and districts. These locations may be seen together in Google Maps. There are 345 properties and districts listed on the National Register in Wayne County, including 14 National Historic Landmarks. The City of Detroit is the location of 262 of these properties and districts, including 10 National Historic Landmarks, they are listed here, while the remaining 83 properties and districts, including 4 National Historic Landmarks, are listed separately. A single property straddles the city limits and thus appears on both lists. This National Park Service list is complete through NPS recent listings posted December 7, 2018. Geographical areas The properties on this list are within the city of Detroit but outside of the downtown, midtown area bounded by the Lodge Freeway to the west, the Edsel Ford Freeway on the north, the Chrysler Freeway and Interstate 375 on the east, and the Detroit River to the south. Properties on this list are further divided into geographical areas. New Center Area, north of Midtown and bounded by the Lodge Freeway on the west, I-94 on the south, I-75 on the east, and Virginia Park on the north. North End, north of the New Center and bounded by the Lodge Freeway on the west, Virginia Park on the south, I-75 on the east, and Highland Park on the north. Palmer Park Area, bounded by Highland Park and McNichols Road on the south, Livernois on the west, 8 Mile on the north, and I-75 on the east. Corktown, Woodbridge, west of downtown and bounded by I-96 to the east, I-94 on the south, the Lodge Freeway to the east, and the Detroit River to the south. Southwest Detroit, the section of Detroit west of Corktown, Woodbridge and south of Michigan Avenue. Eastern Market Area, the section of Detroit east of downtown, midtown and immediately adjacent to Eastern Market. Jefferson Corridor, the section of Detroit east of downtown and Eastern Market and south of Kercheval. West Side, the remainder of Detroit not already delineated west of Woodward Avenue. East Side, the remainder of Detroit not already delineated east of Woodward Avenue. There are 137 properties and districts listed on the National Register in Detroit outside of downtown and midtown, including five National Historic Landmarks and one property straddling the border with River Rouge, Michigan. There are 125 more properties and districts listed on the National Register in downtown and midtown Detroit, including four National Historic Landmarks. These other properties are listed at National Register of Historic Places listings in downtown and midtown Detroit. Altogether there are 262 properties and districts listed on the National Register in Detroit proper. Nine additional properties and districts, including one National Historic Landmark, are located in the Detroit Enclave of Highland Park. Three properties are located in the Detroit Enclave of Hamtramck. The properties and districts in these two Detroit enclaves, plus 71 others, are listed in this list of non-Detroit NRHP listings in Wayne County. History of Detroit Topic. Beginnings Detroit, settled in 1701, is one of the oldest cities in the Midwest. It experienced a disastrous fire in 1805 which nearly destroyed the city, leaving little present-day evidence of old Detroit save a few east side streets named for early French settlers, their ancestors, and some pear trees which were believed to have been planted by early missionaries. After the fire, Judge Augustus B. Woodward designed a plan of evenly spaced public parks with interconnecting semicircular and diagonal streets. Although Woodward's plan was not fully implemented, the basic outline is still in place today in the heart of the city. Main thoroughfares radiate outward from the center of the city like spokes in a wheel, with Jefferson Avenue running parallel to the river, Woodward Avenue running perpendicular to it, and Gratiot, Michigan, and Grand River Avenues interspersed. A sixth main street, Fort, wanders downriver from the center of the city. 
After Detroit rebuilt in the early 19th century, a thriving community soon sprang up, and by the Civil War, over 45,000 people were living in the city, primarily spread along Jefferson Avenue to the east and Fort Street to the west. As in many major American cities, subsequent redevelopment of the central city through the next 150 years has eliminated all but a handful of the antebellum structures in Detroit. The oldest remaining structures are those built as private residences, including a group in the Corktown neighborhood and another set of houses strung along Jefferson Avenue. Notably the Charles Trowbridge House 1826, the oldest known structure in the city, the Joseph Campau House 1835, the Sibley House 1848, the Bobine House 1851, and the Maras House 1855. Other extant pre-1860 structures include Fort Wayne 1849, Saints Peter and Paul Church 1848 and Mariner's Church 1849, and scattered commercial buildings one in Randolph Street Commercial Buildings Historic District, for example. Unfortunately, the demolition of historic structures continues into the present day. Multiple structures listed on the register, including the Alexander Chain House 1855, have been demolished in the last decade. Rise of industry and commerce As Detroit grew into a thriving hub of commerce and industry, the city spread along Jefferson, with multiple manufacturing firms taking advantage of the transportation resources afforded by the river and a parallel rail line. The shipyard that eventually became the Dry Dock Engine Works Detroit Dry Dock Company complex opened on the Detroit River at the foot of Orleans in 1852. Park Davis established a center between East Jefferson Avenue and the river in the 1870s. Another pharmaceutical firm, the Frederick Stearns Company, built a plant in the same area in the 1890s. Globe Tobacco built a manufacturing facility closer to downtown in 1888. The rise of manufacturing led to a new class of wealthy industrialists, entrepreneurs, and professionals. Some of these nouveau riche built along East Jefferson, resulting in structures such as the Thomas A. Parker House 1868, the Crowell Palms House 1881, the William H. Wells House 1889, the John N. Bagley House 1889, and the Frederick K. Stearns House 1902. However, Detroit began increasingly to turn away from the river, and other citizens pushed north of downtown, building houses along Woodward in what was at the time a quiet residential area. Many of these neighborhoods have disappeared under 20th century commercialization of the Woodward Corridor, but some Victorian structures remain, notably the Elisha Taylor House 1870 and the Hudson Evans House 1872, both near the Woodward East Historic District, and the Call. Frank J. Hecker House 1888 and the Charles Lang Freer House 1887 in the East Ferry Avenue Historic District. Near the end of the 19th century, apartment living became more acceptable for affluent middle-class families, and upscale apartments, such as the Coronado Apartments 1894, the Verona Apartments 1894, the Palms Apartments 1903, the Davenport Apartments 1905 in the Cass Davenport Historic District, and the Garden Court Apartments 1915 were constructed to meet the new demand. These well-to-do late 19th century residents also funded the construction of a spate of churches, such as the Cass Avenue Methodist Episcopal Church 1883, the First Presbyterian Church 1889, the Trinity Episcopal Church 1890, built by James E. Scripps, and the First Unitarian Church 1890. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Immigration. Detroit has long been a city of immigrants, from the early French and English settlers in the 18th century, through the Irish who settled in the Corktown neighborhood in the 1840s, to the Greeks, who settled in the Greektown neighborhood in the early 20th century and the Southern whites and African Americans who came to Detroit in the years before the Great Depression. Detroit's industrial boom in the later 19th century created yet another stream of immigrants into Detroit. Perhaps the most significant contingents during this period were the German and Polish immigrants who settled in Detroit in the 1860-1890s. Germans came first, establishing German-speaking churches, primarily on the east side of the city, including St. John's Street. 
Luke's Evangelical Church 1872, St. Joseph Catholic Church 1873, and Sacred Heart Roman Catholic Church 1875, as well as social clubs such as the Harmony Club 1894 and West Side Churches such as St. Boniface 1882 and Gethsemane Evangelical Lutheran Church 1891. Close behind, a wave of Polish immigrants established East Side Roman Catholic parishes such as St. Albertus 1885, Sweetest Heart of Mary 1893, St. 1901, St. Stanislaus 1911, and St. Thomas the Apostle Catholic Church 1923. The Poles also settled on the West Side, founding West Side Dom Polski 1916. Birth of the automobile Around the start of the 20th century, entrepreneurs in the Detroit area—notably Henry Ford—forged into production of the automobile, capitalizing on the already existing machine tool and coach building industry in the city. Early automotive production is recognizable by structures such as the Ford Piquette Avenue Plant 1904, a National Historic Landmark, and multiple structures in the surrounding Piquette Avenue Industrial Historic District including the now-destroyed EMF, Studebaker Plant, 1906, and the new Amsterdam Historic District including the original Cadillac Factory, 1905, and small factories such as the Crescent Brass and Pin Company Building, 1905. Automobile assembly and associated manufacturing soon dominated Detroit, and the newly minted automotive magnates built commercial and office buildings such as General Motors Building 1919, the General Motors Research Laboratory 1928, and the Fisher Building 1928. Topic changes wrought by the automobile The development of the automobile industry led to rising demands for labor, which were filled by huge numbers of newcomers from Europe and the American South. Between 1900 and 1930, the city's population soared from 265,000 to over 1.5 million, pushing the boundaries of the city outward. The population boom led to the construction of apartment buildings across the city, aimed at the middle-class auto worker. These include the Somerset Apartments 1922, the Garden Court Apartments 1915, and the Manchester Apartments 1915. At the same time, new upscale neighborhoods farther from the center of the city sprang up, including Boston Edison, Indian Village, and Palmer Woods. The wealthy moved into these more exclusive neighborhoods as the once exclusive Woodward Avenue neighborhoods such as the Warren Prentice Historic District and the Willis Selden Historic District became mixed with apartments and commercial buildings. As the population spread outwards, new churches were constructed to serve the newly populated areas, notably the Roman Catholic Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament 1913, the Woodward Avenue Presbyterian Church 1908, the Metropolitan United Methodist Church 1922, and the St. Teresa of Avila Roman Catholic Church 1919. The rise of the automobile also required rethinking transportation within the city. The Chestnut Street Grand Trunk Railroad Bridge 1929 was a result of a grade separation that unsnarled train and automobile traffic. The Fort Street Pleasant Street and Norfolk and Western Railroad Viaduct 1928 was a product of the same program, routing trucking traffic over the train traffic. And the West Jefferson Avenue, Rouge River Bridge 1922 allowed the Rouge River to be expanded for barge traffic. Automobile wealth led to a boom in downtown Detroit business, and the construction of a collection of early 20th century skyscrapers. The most notable of these is the Art Deco National Historic Landmark Guardian Building 1928, but numerous other significant office buildings such as the Vinton Building 1916, the Barlam Tower 1927, and the Lawyers Building 1922 were also constructed. The building boom was not confined to businesses. Shopping districts sprang up along Park Avenue, Broadway, and Woodward. Multiple hotels were constructed, including the Fort Shelby Hotel 1916, the Detroit Leland Hotel 1927, the Royal Palm Hotel 1924, and many others. Extravagant movie theaters such as the Fox 1928 and the Palms 1925 were constructed and public buildings, such as Orchestra Hall 1919, the Detroit Public Library 1921, and the Detroit Institute of Arts 1923. <laughs> African Americans 
During the early years of Detroit, the African American population was relatively small. However, the Second Baptist Church 1857, rebuilt 1914, was founded with an African American congregation in the 1830s. The church played an instrumental role in the Underground Railroad, due to Detroit's proximity to Canada. The auto boom of the 20th century changed the population, and in the years following World War I, the black population of Detroit soared. In 1910, fewer than 6,000 blacks called the city home. In 1917, more than 30,000 blacks lived in Detroit. Significant African American structures in Detroit are related to the struggle with segregation. Dunbar Hospital, founded 1914, the Oshin H. Sweet House, 1925, and the Sugar Hill neighborhood. However, other structures, such as the Brightmire Tobin Building, 1905, are tributes to the slow integration in the latter half of the 20th century. Topic architecture A number of notable architects worked in Detroit, including D. H. Burnham & Company, Donaldson & Meyer, McKim, Mead, and White, Smith, Hinkman, and Grills and Wirt C. Rowland, and Minoru Yamasaki. However, Albert Kahn deserves special recognition for the scope and variety of his work in the city, and the number of Kahn buildings listed in the National Register. Kahn designed large industrial buildings such as the Highland Park Ford Plant 1908 in nearby Highland Park a national historic landmark, Fisher Body Plant 21 1921 in the Piquette Avenue Industrial Historic District, and his addition to the Frederick Stearns Building 1906. Kahn's output extended to a range of building types, notably office buildings such as the General Motors Building 1919 and the Fisher Building 1928, both National Historic Landmarks, as well as the Edwin S. George Building 1908, the Vinton Building 1916, the SS Kresge World Headquarters 1928, the Griswold Building 1929, and a string of banks and high-rises in the Detroit Financial District. Kahn also designed private homes the Bernard Ginsburg House, 1898, the Albert Kahn House, 1906, and homes in Boston Edison, Rosedale Park, and Indian Village, apartment and hotel buildings the Palms Apartments, 1903, the Addison Hotel in the Midtown Woodward Historic District, 1905, Garden Court Apartments, 1915, and 1001 Covington in the Palmer Park, Apartment Building Historic District, 1925, churches the 1903 Temple Beth El, the 1923 Temple Beth El, and additions on the First Congregational Church, 1921, and theaters the National Theater, 1911. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Current listings. Topic: <laughs> 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 Downtown and Midtown. Other neighborhoods Former listing See also List of National Historic Landmarks in Michigan National Register of Historic Places listings in Michigan List of Michigan State Historic Sites in Wayne County, Michigan <laughs>